During the breaks, we've been seeing some uh, remarkable live pictures from the BP wellhead. I just want to show them to you and try to explain a little bit what we understand is going on. This is a shot of one of those diamond-tipped circular saws. It appears to be trimming the edges of the riser pipe. Those edges were left ragged by the giant pair of shears that you saw earlier on the program. And the idea is to make the edges clean enough to attach a collection cap. Here's another angle. You can clearly see the downside, of course, to all this. The freshly cut pipe lets a lot more oil flow. So until they can actually cap it off, the spill is actually doing more damage than before the cut. The stakes are incredibly high. This may not work. David Madeline joins me now with the latest. When we talked to Billy Nungesser, he said in his gut he thinks this is going to go till August. Everything that you've experienced so far from this for anyone who lives here has been failure or, or lowered expectations. It doesn't help anyone to expect this to work because they think that they're going to be dealing with this oil no matter what for every day until that well is capped in August. Do we know when we know the results of this operation? We could see them put, attempting to put a cap on sometime tomorrow. It, it could be that early. Uh, we won't know exactly how much oil they're collecting right away. Again, these are just collection systems, and they're not going to be stopping all the oil. So we're going to be seeing some oil, a fraction of that oil possibly. Uh, so are we talking about 1,000 gallons, 2,000 gallons right. a day? We just don't know. And, and the, uh, the idea of this is that essentially it's, it's sucking up the oil. I mean, oil will still be coming out. They're just hoping this cap will be able to suck it up to waiting barges on shore, correct? Right. This is like the grandchild of that big containment dome they started right. a couple of weeks ago that completely failed. This is smaller. They've learned from that mistake. And, and this is just going to be siphoning that oil that's billowing out of that pipe, taking it to a ship on the top where they're going to be burning off the natural gas and carting away the oil. You've been covering this for weeks now. I mean, what, does anything surprise you? I mean, what, what, what over the last couple of days has sort of caught your attention and surprised you? You ask me what surprises me. I've stopped being surprised because I think surprise also goes hand in hand with disappointment. And there's been a lot of disappointment along the way with this. This siphoning tube that they have uh, that was collecting oil from the large leak they had down there was really underperforming. It was still there was still a big cloud of oil billowing out of that. The containment domes they created didn't work. The uh, the big hope was to stop the oil with the top kill. That didn't work. And you see the sense of defeat, the sense of uh, resignation just eating away at people here yeah. with every failure that comes along. And no one is getting their hopes up to see what happens here because even under the best circumstances, there's still going to be oil leaking into the Gulf of Mexico until this well is capped in August. Right. And that's what people are saying. The August figure, that's basically two relief wells that are being dug now, but they won't be finished, we're told, by BP until August. Right. BP said we're going to drill a relief well. We're going to try and intersect where that, right. that well is leaking. And the U.S. government stepped in and said, no, you're going to drill two of them in case the first there was work. talk of that nuclear option. Was that just talking? Was that, did anyone? I haven't heard saying? anyone okay. in any serious position talking right. about that okay. because the idea is you've got a hole in the ground that's leaking oil. Why do something right. to make the hole bigger? Right. Who, who knows what the result of that would be? Right. Madden, we appreciate the reporting as always. We told you earlier that the Justice Department has now opened up a criminal investigation to the oil spill. That occurred today. You can be sure federal prosecutors will want to get their hands on internal BP documents, especially the papers about safety issues on the rig. The story of what happened in the weeks and days and even hours before this uh, rig, uh, the, the explosion, is only just now starting to be revealed. Those documents do, the ones that we've seen so far, do reveal warning signs. That The question, of course, were the warning signs ignored? What was the response to them? Tonight, to keep them honest, Joe Johns. Internal BP documents obtained by congressional investigators show the warning signs of an impending disaster began well before fluid started leaping uncontrolled from the well's blowout preventer just hours before the explosion. In fact, the documents say BP was dealing with well control issues as far back as March 10th when a BP official wrote an email to the MMS in New Orleans reporting we're in the midst of a well control situation and went on to explain plans for dealing with the problem. What troubles a lot of people is that BP apparently did not stop to assess the situation. No one believed that there was going to be a safety issue with pumping that cement job. And so y'all did cons cons discuss your concerns, right? Absolutely. All right. And you went ahead and proceeded with the job anyway? All of the risk had been addressed. All the concerns had been addressed. But an expert on wells and drilling who has reviewed the document said putting on the brakes is what BP should have done. It's standard operating procedure when you have a problem to stop whatever you're doing and resolve the problem before you move on to the next step. BP did not respond to CNN inquiries for this story, but on ABC over the weekend, a BP executive said 
The answers about well control issues in March will have to come from investigators. There were issues of well control signs out there, and there are strict procedures that are written uh, the rig owners to walk through uh, well control. Um, that's what the investigation will take minute by minute and investigate that. Apparently, this wasn't the only time BP had ignored or departed from standard practices. One unsigned document released by the House Energy and Commerce Committee shows that in May of last year, someone at BP asked for a dispensation or departure from BP's own rule book on drilling and well operations policy. One month later, the issue was the well casing, that is the pipe that keeps the well hole open. In June of 2009, according to the New York Times, BP engineers were expressing concerns that the metal casing the company wanted to use might collapse under high pressure. The paper reports that BP went ahead with the casing only after getting special permission because it violated the company's own safety policies. Why anybody would do that is a mystery. Experts we've spoken with dismissed the idea that the company was choosing profit over safety because they argue everybody in the business knows the downside to doing that is potential disaster. There definitely is a profit motive or they wouldn't be drilling for oil. And there's always a pressure, constant pressure on a drill rig to drill faster, but there's also the same pressure to drill safer. It's a dangerous business and if you don't drill safer, then the, the, the profit goes away. A costly accident for sure. BP has only begun to feel the financial pain. Joe John, CNN, Washington. We're going to continue to follow the paper trail in the days and weeks and months ahead. We're back with more from the Gulf at the top of the hour.